a, a Giants podcast for Giants fans. By Giants fans. It's Sean Morash. On the sideline, into the end zone. Touchdown, Giants! From the offseason, through the wins and the losses, it's time to take one, one, one Giant Giants step. step. All right, welcome into One Giant Step, a One Giant Debacle episode of One Giant Step, of which you can download and subscribe everywhere podcasts are available and free on the Odyssey app. Uh, And the audacity, frankly, of the New York Giants today on this Sunday afternoon in a game where I can tell you the fans are revved up in the parking lot to have the kind of performance they had. Makes me want to throw up, makes me want to vomit. Four hours home after a game in which the Giants still have not scored a touchdown in because they can't score touchdowns at home, made me want to vomit. I'm Sean Morash. He's Bryce Gelman. Uh, Bryce, before I even do the pleasantries with you, allow me for just a second. Go. You know that I was fired up to go to this game. You obviously got to take in the Dallas and Cincinnati debacles. Uh, forgive me for having a comparison contest. My game was worse. Okay, today versus the Philadelphia Great. Eagles was by far the worst loss of the year. Just from a... I think a competitive standpoint, number one, number two, a frustration standpoint of understanding what the opponent was in front of you. And number three, I think our worst fears coming into this game all imagined and like it all just stuck in one pot. And and what I mean by that is, and this is for every fan I saw with those dopey green jerseys today and the dopey feather beaked, you know, masks today. I don't walk away from today thinking the four and two Philadelphia Eagles are some kind of great football team. They are a football team that is completely flawed and a football team that the Giants just completely failed to take advantage of in all of their weaknesses. And in fact, allow the Eagles major weakness, which has been their pass rush to look like it was elite because the Giants offensive line completes completes the meltdown without Andrew Thomas, which brings me to that point. Number two, our worst fears recognized. Uh, I sat here. It was clipped. Good job by Brycey Gelman out there on YouTube. Carmen Brasillo and the offensive line uh, of the Giants. I mean, they've earned the benefit of the doubt, even with Josh Azudu do poo, 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 or uh, eventually Evan Neal playing. They earned the benefit of the doubt, or at least Carmen Brasillo did. Josh Azudu sucked. Today, flat out, he gave the Giants completely uncompetitive play at the left tackle position, the kind of un- uncompetitive play that left Daniel Jones nearly decapitated last year in Miami. So anything that Carmen Priscilla has done well with the offensive line, I don't take away from, but Josh Azudu is not being saved as some kind of left tackle. And furthermore, I- I'm just going to keep rambling here for a couple moments. The fact that the Giants spent such a high draft collateral pick on a third round guard who had some versatility and who played a little bit in his rookie year at guard, showing some impressive stuff in the run game, pass protection with thought to be desired. And the Giants basically completely abandoned his job as a guard to turn him into some kind of unfortunate swing tackle of which he sucks at. I think yeah. honestly is the biggest failure in the Shane Dable regime is what's happened with Josh Azudu. So he stunk. He was terrible. And as we predicted, when Daniel Jones doesn't have Andrew Thomas, it is night and day. He's not even great with Andrew Thomas, but when he doesn't have him, oh, 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 baby, deer in headlights. And we'll get to his benching in just a moment. That was horrible. And I don't know how the Giants stick Josh Azudu out there and play him in left tackle the rest of the year with Andrew Thomas. Can you move Jermaine Illuminor over? Is it that hard yeah. to do? And at least give us something with Evan Neal at right tackle. I just thought just from all facets, so frustrating. The Eagles stink. The Giants stink worse, and the Giants season, whatever I was trying to be positive about, is completely torpedoed because Andrew Thomas is out, and anything we tried to find a sliver of a positive with Andrew Thomas out is abandoned ship. That was awful, it was unfortunate, and it sucks, and the season sucks, and here we are again. Uh, I got a text from another content creator who does great work with the Giants on my bus ride home. Great job by Mulcahy. He's out in Wildfire. They always do a great tailgate bus. If you travel from Long Island, check them out. That's a little free pop. I pay my way. I'm just saying they do a good job. It's very convenient. Everything. I got to watch the four o'clock games. Got a text going, dude. I don't know how much longer we can continue to content create for this team. And that's not to divert yeah. you away from our podcast or other people's podcast, but it's just the truth. I mean, this is just how many more years we got to go through this crap. Now, that's four and a half minutes of me rambling, rambling, rambling. Bryce, uh, before, let's keep all the Jones benching stuff out there. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But everything I've said, initial reaction to the game, what, what do you got for us? 
Let me just say this. It, it, it would have been really hard for anything to bring me down from the high of the Yankees last night. But the Giants. Oh, yeah. sure, Bryce sure gave up, by the way, Yankee game. fans. Bryce gave up after game three. They're not going to win the series. It's a kind of all you don't read that from. As I text you, all I've known is pain. Like they've blown. All right, whatever. I'm not, I'm not getting into this. What I'm trying to explain to you, though, is my premonition that this season is over. Premonition. Premonition. What are we doing here? We're, we're, come on. I'm in a bad mood, Bryce. Don't cross I, I me. I understand it. Don't take it out on me. Don't take it out on me. We're both in the same boat here. The season is over. I mean, there's there's no there's no other if, ends, or buts about it. It's over. Yeah. And as I said, I was so happy and excited. And as a sports fan, I think I came back down to earth when it comes to the Yankees and, like, understand that there's four more games and this is where the Yankees should have been for, you know, for years prior. The Giants, though, it's just the same old you-know-what. Time and time again, how much more of it can we take? Like, like I, I, I really was excited going into this season, oh, I was. and I think you know, week by week, of, of course, after week one, you thought that the season could have been over. You thought Daniel Jones, that experiment, if we can even call it that, in year six, was over as well. Turns out the Vikings were just a really good football team, and, and you know, the Giants from that point on, you're kind of like you know, they they, they didn't fully sink. They, they they were they were they were treading water, and they showed right. you those flashes of greatness, of brilliance, specifically on the defensive side. But it was all held together on offense by the offensive line play. The second you lost Andrew Thomas, we talked about it in our preview show mm-hmm. for this game. We both were like, How, like I, I I predicted a loss. You predicted the Giants to win. I disagreed with you. I just I couldn't see it. I couldn't see yeah. how well, losing your anchor right, of your yeah. offensive line. They'd be able to even slightly replicate the success that they had, and they still weren't scoring with a good offensive line. It's crazy. But, Bryce, again, my pick, and I think I stated this, I'm going to say, was also had everything to do with the way the Eagles had begun to crater. Remember, they didn't have their left tackle either, and yet the Giants could expose nothing of the Philadelphia Eagles, who basically got exposed by every single team on the schedule. And I think that's what pisses me off the most, that all these fans got to take over MetLife Stadium and they got say, and great, good for Saquon return. He scores his touchdown, has his couple big runs. Then we call it the Saquon special. Too much dancing beyond the line, breaks off a couple big runs, clouds the stats, been telling everybody for years. Uh, but great, take more bows. And they got to go home smiling like they are, you know, King Todd. And you know what's going to happen. They're going to go out next week or the week after, and the Eagles are going to look like crap again. And I think that's what pisses me off. How could the Giants continue to not take advantage of this team when everybody else freaking does? It's so annoying and so frustrating. Uh, it, it just kills me. Now, let's go to this, you know, going forward. Let's just spin this forward. I mean, throw out the tape. I mean, the team stunk today. Theo Johnson has to push off other than that. They had nothing cooking offensively. No. No. Jalen Hyatt finally gets in the game late when Jermont comes in, extends out, gets hurt there. Um, there are, there's going to be talked about things with coaching here. I've already seen this on social media with Dable, which I, I want to get to in a second. But let's just start with the quarterback. The quarterback got benched today, Daniel Jones. Okay, this wasn't necessarily about the injury clause. Maybe it was because he was taking sack after sack. Brian Dable said that the Giants needed a spark. I I was pointing out in the stands. There was only 15 of us left when I saw Drew Locke warming up. I was like, okay, he's coming in the game. Locke comes in, does nothing. He's terrible. Brian Dable, though, after the game, while saying that Daniel Jones is the quarterback, he also basically went on to say, look, they've brought in weapons. They've, and I'm paraphrasing here, this, that, and the other. And basically said, you know, how much more are you supposed to do for a guy before it finally takes off? And you can't have perfect offensive line play all the time. Daniel Jones mentally cannot overcome this. It's impossible to overcome it. And at least, it, it to me, it sounded like a quarterback that was done with Daniel Jones. And at two and five, with the season's cooked, how could you not be? My guess, Price, my guess, I think, is that they give Daniel Jones one more week versus Pittsburgh. It'll probably be ugly because their pass rush is going to destroy the Giants offensive yep. line, especially what's going on, unless they move Illuminor over. But even then, uh, he will get benched again. And then when the Giants come back home, they will have a new quarterback. Now, before I let you answer that, I also want to say this. I was around Mr. Mara right before that opener with Minnesota, and I know two things were going to be important to him. That opener versus the Vikings at home, welcoming back all the legends, friends, and families. They were embarrassed. They have still not won a home game. Today, after what we saw in Hard Knocks with the Saquon Barkley stuff, forget forget the fact that was that it was the right move to let Saquon walk because it was. That, you know, pissed them off today. You know, watching all those Eagle fans with Barkley jerseys cheering on Barkley pissed off John Mara today. 
if the fans are going to become apathetic, that next home game, how is Tommy DeVito not the guy over Drew Locke? Because you know, from ownership standpoints, the fans are going to care more about DeVito and be into that story. You just saw what Drew Locke is. Drew Locke's not going to change anything behind this offensive line. He's atrocious too. Um, I think Jones plays, but I wouldn't be stunned in two weeks if if Locke gets kind of leapfrogged and it ends up being a DeVito situation. Uh, so where do you stand on all this, Bryce? I can't do it. I, I cannot go through with that. I can't see that. You're right. What other reason why uh, would people want to come to the games? And I hope no one from Long Island goes to another game yeah. this season after what you had to deal with today. I could it not imagine brutal. it taking three and a half to four hours to get home after Crazy. watching your team get yeah. – Blanked by, by insane. Insane. your biggest rival, 28 to 3. That is as demoralizing as it gets, almost as demoralizing as that performance today. I completely see your side of this. I see that DeVito playing over Locke, who clearly doesn't have it. I oh, think you put the majority you put the majority of quarterbacks though behind this offensive line, which didn't look connected whatsoever. JMS got beat a lot today. We haven't seen that all season. I know. Uh, J- they all look they terrible. Lost, they, 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 they all look everything terrible. changed. Everything changed. The connectedness. And if, and if everything's going to change so much. Bryce, if the connectedness yeah. is going to change anyway, then just play aluminum or left tackle. Just play, exactly. play right. your best tackle at left tackle if you're going to lose all that chemistry from one guy falling. I completely, completely see that. And, and by the way, to lose. I, they have nothing to lose to do that, too. And say what you want to say about Tommy DeVito. And by no means am I telling you he's the future franchise quarterback or anything. He at least plays with some energy and some life. And at least when he's taking the sacks and holding on to the ball too long, you know he's going to bounce right up. Daniel Jones, from the moment he got sacked the first time in this game, that was it. <laughs> Mentality completely sunk. Drew Locke looked completely lost when he came in. I, I'm just, I'm sorry. If you're going to lose, go down swinging and at least give me the guy with the energy and the spunk and a little pizzazz. And that's why I am saying this in mid October or late October. Two things happened today. We saw the figurative end of Daniel Jones as the Giants quarterback. We knew it was coming anyway, but the literal end is not here probably until next Monday night. Brian Dable officially, by benching him today and, and talking about this postgame, has, has ended Daniel Jones' giant career just not effectively yet. On top of that, I just, if you're going to do this and you're going to lose, why not at least give the fans the guy they want because there's no way you can tell me Drew Locke is drastically better. You just, you cannot tell me that. And the one yeah. thing this ownership is not going to like is empty seats and opposing seats. People will show up for DeVito. I think all of that considered, and even with all that aside, this injury guarantee is looming too large at this point yeah. with how bad the offensive line looked today. I yep. was like, look at the Browns took- with Deshaun Watson today with the Achilles. Exactly. Exactly. Can you imagine if, if Daniel Jones gets hurt right now? Say what you want about yeah. where this season is. We both are in agreement. With the fact that this Giants team with a good quarterback could contend. Now yep. let's let let's get that injury guarantee. And then let's put his contract on the books for next year, too. You know what that does, Sean? That 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 completely limits your opportunities to go out and sign other impactful yeah. players for your team. Oh, they're instead gonna of it. just drafting a rookie quarterback, having them on a rookie scale deal and improving all around the field, specifically in the secondary. You're not gonna be able to do any of that. Yeah. If Daniel Jones is on the books for next year. Why even risk it? Do not play him. Sit him immediately. I I I I can't fathom him Look, coming in and playing again against the Steelers. I can't remember this. we we got raw Brian Dable after the game, right? We we haven't had him now watching the full night of TV. We watch the tape, watch the tape. He could. I don't think he will, but I, he could pull the plug on Jones going into the next game just by saying, hey, after watching some tape, we feel as the just because he said he's the quarterback today. He you know card subject to change as some might say, but either way, the, the end is near, man. It's just a matter of, put it this way, Thanksgiving versus the Dallas Cowboys, which is our next real shot at right. Well, I guess Washington comes before them, but still, I, I it's going to be the locker DeVito, and I kind of think based on the fan stuff, I think that does matter with ownership and, and wanting, you know, the owner to be happy with you as a head coach and general manager. It is a business. It is a business. It is, you Mowers, can't have what happened Mowers, today with the fans. You can't. The Mowers, this is their business. They make money off the Giants. Yep. Why would and they dip, put a quarterback in who's not going to do well and right, not going to draw dip, anyone into the seats? Right. You, you you don't want those empty seats, and you want the team playing hard. DeVito's going to do that for you. Coach him up. All right, now on that note with Dable, though, I, I, I'm I going to continue to reiterate this, at least from my half of this one giant step podcast. I can't speak for Bryce's step. I'm still very pro Brian Dable, and I am pro Joe Shane. Yes. The Daniel Jones situation is on them for extending him, but I also, come on, how can we blame him after the one 
playoff year. They made their initial reaction was to not give him that option. Today was the first time I felt like the Giants in the second half of a game more or less quit. Some of the players quit. For sure, Deontay Banks quit on that one run with Jalen Hurts along the sideline. That is the kind of stuff that when we talk about records, that's why when it says, well, how many wins does the team have to have to make sure the head coach stays the head coach? I don't think it's about wins. I think it's about how it looks and and, and quitting. The team can't have second halves like they had. You know, you could lose and you can get blown out, but it can't look like guys are blatantly giving up and not reacting to the coach because that is how a coach ultimately loses his job. I still hold strong that I think Shane and Dable will be allowed to pick their own quarterback upcoming in the draft. But just beware. As long as the ghost of Bill Belichick is lurking and little, little stuff like you saw from Deontay Banks today and little, little stuff like an, an owner who I respect, but he seemingly disagrees with common sense when it came to paying Saquon Barkley, having him rush up and down the field like that and having all the Eagle fans with the jersey going nuts and the Giants getting blown out. I can't say definitively that Dable is 100% safe, even though I think it would be patently absurd to fire him. So I, th- that's just kind of where I stand on that. Uh, and I think there's a groundswell, and the best way to solve that is maybe – you know, please, you know, get a little energy, make a quarterback change. Maybe that helps, but you can't keep running out Josh Azudu and Daniel Jones out there. That's how you're going to further lose a locker room, man. If you feel like you're doing your job and we're doing the same thing over and over again. So I do think that Brian Dable's job does coincide with whatever he decides to do at quarterback and probably left tackle here, Bryce. Well, I think there's two sides to, to this coin. I think, I think one side, the positive side is how well they drafted. The fact that, yeah. It's kind of consensusly agreed that the Giants had the best 2024 draft. The fact that each one of their guys that were taken in the first yes, four good. rounds, Tyrone Tracy too, have contributed and have become yeah, no, it's a good really guys. solid pieces. So they showed you. And I, I, we, we talked about this a few weeks ago. You said that 2022, they weren't necessarily his scouts. He was going off of what Gettleman scouts had. He made those selections. Of course, he whiffed. The biggest whiff, one of the biggest whiffs in Giants history with Evan Neal, uh, came on different story. But they completely, you know what, the bed in that draft class. They made up yep. for it. And then some with this draft class. I think that is what, in my mind, if I was the owner, would afford Joe Shane and Brian Dable by extension yeah. some time. That's, that's the one side. The other side, how the heck are you not prepared for Andrew Thomas to go down with this injury, uh, you, you, you could say you could say you could say what? Like, oh, we expected him to be healthy. He was 100 percent going in this Here's season. The you got to have a backup. You have to have right. a backup. Is it right. Josh Zudo who is a guard? Here's what pisses me off. They came in prepared. His name's Jermaine Illuminor. They were ready up until who June. Do it, who do you put at right tackle though? Evan Neal can't play right tackle. Well, who I, do you I put trust right Ev- tackle. Hot take. I trust Evan Neal at right tackle more than I trust Josh Azudu at left tackle. Good last year. He wasn't good last year, so okay. I don't know how you could possibly do that. Okay. Left tackle is far more important than right tackle. I agree. I, think you, I agree. You can scheme right tackle more. Dude, the issue – remember this. If Evan Neal didn't have any setbacks with his feet and was rehab in the offseason, when they signed Jermaine Illuminor, yeah, it was about the flexibility. He was going to start at guard, and Greg Van Roten wasn't going to be here. Okay. They signed Jermaine Illuminor for his flexibility. He is the backup plan. Then, because he's been so damn good at right tackle, and probably because the team hates Evan Neal, I, I mean, let's just be honest, there's something clearly there. The they comment. have stuck with stuck to their guns with him at right tackle. No, no the, the plan should be you sign a guy like Jermaine Illuminor who's been steady. He's got to be a backup left tackle too, and you shake things up on the line because the old continuity thing completely backfired today. The whole line sucked without Andrew Thomas. So you're right. No, you're right. I'm, I'm sorry. They have to, that was their they plan. Nothing, Go play him at left tackle. Moving, moving Illuminar. And we got to see it because they need to do it. There's yeah. no other excuses. You cannot continue that, to and by the way, out Josh maybe that, left tackle. Maybe that's how Daniel Jones is the quarterback. Maybe they know based on what they watched today and to see the tape is that, all right, we're going to play Illuminar at left tackle and then we'll see what happens here. Uh, maybe, but either way, something's got to change and I'm, I'm disgusted and, and put it this way. I, this is exactly why you should download and subscribe to one giant step. Because I think by the time we rejoin you at the end of the week to preview the Steelers Monday night game coming up, I think we're going to have more of a definitive look. Uh, whether that's an offensive line shakeup we see in the making, 
whether that is a quarterback benching, I do think there will be something shaken up off of this game that we will be talking about. But Bryce, I'm going to level with you, kiddo. We've done 20 minutes. I got Here no go. voice. Go. I, got, I got I got nothing left, kid. I got nothing left. So I'm going to watch the Jets and Steelers here. I'm going to watch the Dodgers and Mets here. I'm going to watch the Liberty and Lynx here. And that's that. And I'm annoyed. I'm unhappy. And it was another miserable Sunday at the tin can in the swamp they call MetLife Stadium. Thank you for listening as always. Thank you for Bryce for having hair while I'm bald. But thanks to everybody for taking one giant step with us.